Welcome to All Classic Car and in this selection we're looking at family cars from the 1970s here in Britain and to begin with a non-British car indeed. This is a rare Simca Estate circa 1971. Um, you hardly ever see these. This used to turn up at local shows quite regularly. I've not seen it for a little while. Nice period roof rack on the top of this one. Now one of Luton's finest, we've got a Vauxhall here, this is a VX2300, I know it's our edge from another photograph I have which dates it to late 76 or early 1977, looks very original car based on the FE Victor, and to Volvo now, the first of several Volvos to feature in this particular section, this is a 145 which makes it the estate car version, this is an interim car about 1971 with the flush door handles previously um, the door handles were sticking out slightly as we'll see later talking of flush door handles we've got a Morris Marina here of the late 1970s looks like a very well preserved car this was at the Cape Stone Classic Car Show not original wheels steering wheel and spoiler I think but quite a rare survivor now and very original is this four-door Mark 1 Ford Escort circa 1973 or early 1974 there's so many rally cars around there, it's nice just to see a standard car. This was typical of what we'd have seen on driveways up and down the country. As was this, perhaps, as a second car. This is an early 1970s Fiat 500, of course. Really bonny little car indeed, circa 1971. Now these were fairly scarce even back in the day. Um, this is the late 1970s, about 1979, Vauxhall Royale. This is one of the plusher cars in the Vauxhall range of the late 1970s. You can actually see a Carlton a bit further away, but that's later than the time period for this video. And also late 1970s is this Citroen CX, a bit of a left field choice. But you did see them around and about fairly often here in the UK, here in Britain. Um, CXs and GSs were quite commonly bought. And here, a rival from British Leyland. The uh, Austin Maxi, indeed. This one from about 1978, and a fetching shade of BL Brown. Now here's a rarity, um, but Japanese cars were becoming quite commonplace back in the 1970s in this country. PCF 182M, there's a Datsun Violet, this is a 140J four door saloon from 1974. There's a Fiat alongside, is that a 132 perhaps? Now to two CVs, these were uh, a bit like the Fiat 500, a fairly common second car purchase in the 1970s in this country. We've got a pair of two CVs here. And the Mark III Cortina, these were everywhere back in the 1970s, a very popular choice for families. Um, this is an early 1970s GXL, this is a posh one, it's got wide rust style wheels on it, a vinyl roof and four headlights. And this is the one of the plusher versions of the Austin Princess. You can tell that by the shape of the front lights. The more basic versions just have twin circular lamps either side. I'm guessing this is an HLE. I would have thought this is a 2.2 litre car, I think from late 78. While this 3.5 litre V8 powered car is the Rover P6, of course, from the early 1970s. The badge on the side, 3500S, points to this being a manual gearbox version. Most of them are autos. Now this one is slightly later than the 1970s, but it's very much a 1970s design. This is Peugeot 604, registered in 84, another 2.7 litre engine. The Fiat 127 alongside, that was a very common sight in the 70s as well. As were these, the Austin Allegro. This is a late 70s example. Four-door saloon, you can see the uh, transverse mounted A-series engine there under the bonnet. An immaculate example here, the NEC Classic Car Show. A Reliant Kitten now. Um, not all Reliants had three wheels. Um, this little fiberglass car is a four-wheeler on period Wolf Race Alley wheels, no less. Carrying on with these family cars in the 1970s, this is the Chrysler rather than the Hillman Avenger Estates from late 1976. Also slightly later than our time frame, but very much a 1970s car is a Vauxhall Chevette here in a rare four-door saloon form. Most of the survivors I see seem to be hatchbacks, but this is the four-door saloon version of the Chevette. Quite a rare sight now. Beautiful in brown, we've got a circa 1979 Austin Princess. This is one of the versions with the four circular headlights rather than the plusher HLEs. Oops, uh, Vauxhall, Vauxhall, uh, Volkswagen's uh, saloon here, of course it's the, the ever popular Beetle from the 1970s, this particular example I'm guessing early 70s, 
and they continued in the production when Germany stopped making them continued in production in Mexico for decades to come now here's a rarity this is a Saab 99L Combi Coupe in a hatchback version this one's been upgraded with the EMS alley wheels the EMS was a fuel injected Saab 99 it's also got the headlamp wipers but quite a rare sight now as is this mighty machine a Toyota Crown Estate this is a North Welsh registered car from about 1973 or early 1974. What a machine. Equally rare is this J-Reg 1970 or thereabouts Austin 3 litre. This was based on a land crab of course, um, but they weren't hugely popular back in the day. They didn't sell very well and as such survivors like this very original example are quite rare now. You don't see too many of these either, 1977 or early 78 Datsun. This is an F2, the 120A series coupe from 1978. Period alley wheels on this one. To NSU now, um, this is the fairly rare NSU Prince rear engine car on period alley wheels. This car dates to about late 69, early 1970 or thereabouts. But again, very popular sight on driveways up and down the land in the 1970s family car well you couldn't have not have an 1100 or a 1300 in here somewhere this is a Morris 1300 registered in June of 1971 four-door car they also did two doors and the estates classic mini now in clubman form this uh, the idea of this was to modernize the mini a little bit and make accessibility into the bonnet that little bit easier this is a 1975 mini clubman in blaze orange with a 998 a series engine of course under the bonnet also showing off its engine is this front-wheel drive Triumph 1300. This had a 1296cc engine that later went on into the Mark IV Spitfire and so on. Continuing in production really into about 1980 or thereabouts were the last of the Spitfires. And here we've got a two-door saloon version of the Saab 99. This is a J-Reg car, had the 1709cc four-cylinder engine in it. Classic Hillman now, H-Reg, so late 1969 or early 1970, Hillman Avenger, the four-door saloon version. I remember a neighbour of ours had a brand new silver one of these in the late 1970s. I often wondered if it was a Jubilee edition, perhaps, with a local dealer. And now a Morris 1800. This is the car that the Austin 3 litre that we just saw was based upon, of course. This is an N-Reg car, late 74-ish. Uh, very nice example in maroon at the Cape Thorn Classic Car Show. Now to Tatton Park Classic Car Show in the mid-2000s, a gathering of voxels including the super rare VX2300 Estate from about 1976. Judging by the sockets on the tow bar, it's used to tow a caravan, at least it was. Is it still around? Now to the late 1970s and a V8 powered Rover ST1. The classic Mark 1 Escort here and a Fiesta alongside it for added forwardness, both typical sites of the 1970s, the Escort N-Reg, so late 74, early 1975, a very standard looking four-door saloon, great survivor. And one of the big triumphs now, this is the 2500S, this had the 2.5 litre straight six engine on twin carburettors, there was also the PI version before this, um, but the S would have been a, an easier car to live with on a day-to-day -day basis I suspect. Now the sporty ADO 16, the Austin 1300 GT, this one from about 1971, very distinctive wheel trims on the GT model and it had the racy vinyl roof, extra dials, trims down the side and so on. Now, got a classic BMW, this is the E3 series saloon of the early 1970s, uh, various engine options, there were 2.5 litre up to 3.3, um, this is the 2500 version circa 1972. Similar age as this Vauxhall Viva HC, once a common sight, you know, uh, back in the day, if you were after a fairly affordable saloon car, this may well have been on your shopping list here in the UK. You don't see these too often, Lancia Beta Saloon. Lancia ended up buying most of these back due to rampant rot problems with them. Um, it looks like hatchback, but as you can see, it does have an opening boot lid and a fixed rear window, surprisingly. This is a really rare car, I mean Citroen GS's are pretty thin on the ground anyway, and this is the GS Basalt, limited edition from 1978, only 1800 or so of these were built, and this is the only known right-hand drive survivor, unless you know differently, please let me know in the comments. Now, Mark 1 Golf, um, this car really transformed uh, VW's fortunes, this is an S-Reg car, about 1977 or 78, five-door hatchback of course, period roof rack, and a very neatly designed little car.
Now to Triumph, early 1970s, and we've got a Triumph 1500 four-door saloon in brown. Looks like a regularly well-used example, and all the better for it. Two for the price of one here, classic Austin Allegro's of the night, late, so mid to late 1970s. A mate of mine's mum brought a new one, an s reg one, back in the 70s. Hers was bright orange, this one's maroon. But alongside is a bright orange saloon here. That was at Tatton Park. Down to the NEC again, we've got a classic Range Rover. This one's about sort of early 1970-ish in date. Three and a half litre Rover V8 engine, all of them had those at that time. Diesels followed much later, as did the four-door cars. Now the little Datsun, this is a Datsun 100A, circa 1975, uh, wheels are non-original but otherwise it looks like a fairly original little car. And down, down to the Haynes Motor Museum in Somerset and we have this quite rare Humber Scepter. This was a posh version of the Arrow series cars, the Hillman Minx, Hillman Hunter and so on. And this was a Scepter with its vinyl roof and fancy wheel trims etc. Of course, if that was a bit too normal, you could always opt for a Citroen DS, as someone did back in 1973 with this blue left-hand drive example. This was at a classic car gathering at Donington Park Racing Circuit quite a few years ago now. And to Western Park, one of the classic car shows there in the mid-2000s, and I spotted this Mitsubishi Colt Estate. It's the only time I've ever seen this particular car. I assume it's still around somewhere. This one dates to about 1978, but represents the invasion of Japanese cars that took place back in the 70s. Another 70s survivor is this Vauxhall Chevette Estate. Various modifications, it's actually quite hard to find non-modified, unmodified cars of the 70s now. It shows they all seem to have mini light wheels or so. Similar changes. And here we have a trio of Renault 16s. These first came out in the mid-1960s. I think these are all 1970s examples. A classic Rover now. This is a P5B four-door coupe. And the P5B, the B comes from Buick, they were the original designers of the V8 engine that found their way under the bonnet of these mighty rovers. Fantastic cars. We'll see a saloon version later. And now another of the ADO 16s, an Austin 1300, circa 1972, and it's the Estate. It's the Austin Countryman version of the 1300. Again, a very popular family car back in the 1970s. Less common were these. This is the six-cylinder Volvo 164. Early cars were carbureted, then later the 164E came along with fuel injection. You could have manual gearbox or auto. These were quite a posh car, really. And another classic Swede. This is a 1974 or early 75 Saab 96 V4. All of these were two-door saloons. These had the German Ford of Germany V4 engine under the bonnet, not the V4 Transit engine. This was Dad's old VDP a few years ago, his little VDP 1300, this one from 1971 or early 72. Beautiful little car this one was, under 20,000 miles, ex Rolls Royce aero engine chap that owned it. Now to Ford and the mighty Mark I Ford Granada, L Reg car 1972, early 73. Classic Fiat here, this is the four-door Fiat 128. Classic little Mini here, registered late 73, early 74. At first I thought this might be a Mark III, but I think it's a Mark IV because the Mark III's have a double gutter running along the side of the roof, but this has a single gutter, which makes me think it's probably an early Mark IV. Now to Triumph again, and we have an M-Reg 1973 Triumph Toledo. This was at Chumley Castle Classic Car Show, and alongside that, another little popular saloon of the early 1970s, the DAF 33. Here's an interesting car, a bit of a mongrel. Um, it started out as an Opel Ascona, one of the A-series cars, and then someone's grafted on the front end from the Manta A Coupe, and uh, the end result is a very stylish little estate car. Also GM, this time Vauxhall, this is the mighty Vauxhall Viscount of the early 1970s. A very plush, luxurious car, vinyl roof, full length sunroof in this one. Although on this particular day at Tatton Park it certainly didn't need a sunroof. That's the NEC and the Audi Club stand and we've got this rare right hand drive Audi 100 LS, a four door saloon. You could usually hear these coming before you saw them. Here we've got a T-Reg 1978 Chrysler Alpine. 
quite a neat looking car, I think quite stylish really for the era, but it was so the engine was so noisy, it was quite a rattly engine by design, you could always hear them coming and you knew what was coming. To the early 1970s, and we've got a rear three-quarter view now of a Vauxhall Victor FD estate, sort of late 69, early 1970, this particular example, but a really rare survivor, I assume it's still around somewhere. Same with this Hillman Hunter, this is K-Reg, so 71, 72-ish. Uh, metallic colour and again at a very damp Tutton Park. The Ford Cortinas were so popular in the 1970s. This example is a Mark IV. These were built from 1976 through to 1979. The Hillman Imp. These were very common little cars. Um, this is a J Reg car, 1970 or 71. Metallic gold. A neighbour of ours, an elderly neighbour up the road from us when I was a kid. He had one identical to this. It could even be this car. This was at Tatton Park quite a few years ago. Now to Western Park. Got a trio of 70s classics here. There's a Mark I Escort on the left there. A Mark V Cortina in the background. That'd be early 80s, just about. But in the foreground, this Vision in Orange is a Volvo 244 DL. Another rare car, similar age, is this Opel. This is an Opel Record Berliner. It's a two-litre S car from 1978, one of the more upmarket versions with the alley wheels and the headlamp wipers. So quite a few mod cons, the plush velour interior. And to Germany here, a bit of idiosyncraticness here, we've got the rotary-engined NSU R080. So if you're 71, 1972 or thereabouts, there are two of these that I've seen at local shows. Whether they're in the same ownership or not, I don't know. Now, a rear three-quarter view of the Marina Coupe TC, TC for twin carburettors. Always looked slightly odd because they use a standard front saloon doors. Um, they could have done with longer doors on them, they would have been much sleeker, I think. Now to the Vauxhall Owners Club stand, we've got YRO348N. This is a Vauxhall Victor 2300 estate car from 1974. Quite a sleek looking car, very low curvy roof line, which may have compromised the space inside, but did look quite good. And I do have a soft spot for these as well, a Peugeot 504. This is a 1978 car, a 504 saloon. And I do sometimes get tempted by the estate car versions of these because they are huge and super reliable. Another one of Dagenham's finest here, we've got a 2.8 gear Ford Granada. This is a Mark II Granada from 1978 or early 79. All mod cons, metallic paint and vinyl roof, alley wheels, etc, etc. Another four-door saloon here, slightly earlier, is this Opal. This is an Opal Ascona A series, uh, 1600S from 1974. That's the front end of that estate car that I mentioned before would have had. Now, stay with Vauxhall, we've got a Victor FD here. These were built from 1966 to 1974. Two marinas here, two classics for the price of one. In the foreground we've got a 1973 marina four-door saloon and alongside that the coupe. Note the different grille treatments, the earlier car is on the right, the revised sort of marina 2 if you like is on the left. And the four headlighted version of the Hillman Avenger estate here. Quite a neat car, done up as a bit of a rally support replica by the look of it. Chrysler dealer team it says on the back corner there. I learned to drive in a car very similar to this. Obviously it's a mini estate. I do remember the sliding windows in the back. They always used to sort of stick when the runners uh, used to get full of moss and gunge and all sorts of things. So they weren't super effective. Staying with the states, we've got an early 1970s Vauxhall Beaver HC and a bit like the Victor that we saw before. And the roof line is very curvy, but it does compromise the interior space a little bit, unlike Volvo, which went for a very boxy rear end. And much smaller is this little gem down at the Haynes Motor Museum. This is an early 1970s Honda N600. And I do believe, despite Honda being Japanese, I think these were assembled in Taiwan. But let me know if I've got that wrong. Classic Jag now, or rather Daimler, if you had a slightly deeper pockets. This is a mid-70s Series 2 XJ. You can tell the Series 2s by the higher front bumper and the shallower grille. And also the front door quarter lights opened on the Series 1, but not on the Series 2. And here we've got the plush version of the Mark II Cortina. This is the Cortina 1600E, circa 1970. Jazzy paints, Rothstyle wheels, pop-up sunroof, radio aerial, wing mirrors, and so on. And the classic Volvo here. Now this is another example. We had the 145 Estate, and this is a four-door saloon equivalent, again with the flush door handles. 
And just for comparison, this is what came before, but this is the rare 142, the two-door version of the 140. And you can see the little red blob on the badge on the wing there. That signifies that it's a 142S, which had the twin rather than the single carburetor set up under the bonnet. Back to Roots Group and another Hillman Avenger Estate. These are such rare cars now, and especially in this condition. Another one of the big triumphs here. This is another two and a half litre. Like I said before, you could have the two litre or the 2.5. This one dates to late 1974 or early 1975. This was at Alton Park last year, I think. Now a mighty Alfa Romeo GPH 555N. This is an Alfa Romeo Alfetta, circa 1974. This was at the uh, La Vie en Bleu at uh, the Prescott Hill Climb a couple of years back. KXE 922K. This is a Vauxhall Ventura, circa March 1972. These were based on the Vauxhall Victor FD, but the posh one with a 3.3 litre engine. So I imagine they went quite well. Here's a Citroen Amy 8 and a Citroen Amy 6. Had the reverse rake rear window, a bit like the 105 the Anglia. The Amy 8 had the more conventional roof line of this car here. Just to round off the set, we've had various versions of the Saab 99 and this is the four-door saloon. You'll see how the doors continue all the way down and wrap underneath with no obvious door sill. Um, that, the idea was that you wouldn't get your trousers dirty when you're clambering in and out. Good thinking. And a lovely little Triumph Dolomite here now from the early 70s, K-Reg. This series, K-Reg, ran from August 71 to July 1972. Up until 1966, these date letters ran January to December, but after that, they ran sort of from one year to the next. Here, we have a Mark I four-door Vauxhall Cavalier. This was at the Chumley Classic Car Show. The fairly rare Audi. I mean, nowadays they're everywhere. Um, but this is an Audi 80, a B1. These were built from 72 to 1978. A pre-facelift car that happened in autumn of 76 when they got rectangular headlamps and so on. So that's quite a rare survivor now. As is this mighty machine. You were doing quite well if one of these was your family car back in the 1970s. This is a 1975 or 76 Ford Granada Mark I Estate. Very plush machine indeed. As is this, circa 1979 Rover SD1. I think this was probably the V8S model. Metallic green, jazzy gold wheels. Very smart indeed. Somewhat more affordable for your typical 1970s motorist is this spot 1974 or 75 Renault 12 TL. Another Allegro, this time it's the Jazzy Allegro Equipe, or Equipe, uh, V-Reg 1979, so quite a way into production. They had all the stickers, fancy wheels, Jazzy interior trim you can just see there, uh, really jazzing up the original look of the Allegro. And this is one of the very first Saab 900 turbos. The 900 came along in 1979, which is the date of this particular car. This is a three-door turbo. Dad had a 79 five-door turbo. They were great, great cars. And this is a rarity now. This is a Mark I Escort Estate Automatic. If the badge on the tailgate is anything to go by, seriously rare car from 72 or 73. Who remembers only one of those, or indeed any of the cars featured in this video? These were introduced in the late 60s and continued until the early 1970s. This is the VW Type 3. This was the square back, or the estate version. Like the period uh, luggage on the roof. Renault 5s were a common sight once as well, very much a 1970s design. This is a sporty Gordini, but most of them are somewhat more uh, prosaic than this sporty version. Now, here we've got a Mark II Ford Escort. This is a four-door saloon, a 1.3 litre car from 1976 or early 1977. The Volvo alongside is a similar age too, 244. Back to Japan again and the NEC Classic Car Show and this is a 72 or 1973 uh, Honda. This is the Z600 Coupe, circa 1973. I don't think that many sold in this country so it's a super duper rare car, right hand drive. And this is a pretty obscure vehicle now as well, the Hilma Minx Estate. This was based on the Arrow series. As you can see a much boxier roofline compared to the rival Vauxhalls and uh, probably made it just that little bit more practical I would imagine. But a very rare sight now. Look at this Marina, this is one of the facelifted sort of series or phase twos if you like. 
according to the information board it's a 78 Morris Marina 1.8 special very very shiny indeed classic BMW now these were super common back in the 1970s but they would have made a decent uh, family car if you've got, got reasonably deep pockets 2002 this one from 74 early 75 the 1100 in the background is a more likely choice I would have thought though one of the Land Crabs now, this is the Wolseley 1885 version of 1970. Another classic Fiesta here, this is a Mark 1 early 1980s version but very much a 1970s car when they were designed. This was uh, called internally Project Bobcat if I remember correctly. We've had the Type 3 square back. And now here's the fastback version of the VW Type 3. This one from 70 or early 1971, thereabouts. Rear engine, just like the Beetle. This was at Western Park. Classic car show quite a few years ago now. Another intriguing little car. This was down at the Haynes Motor Museum, early 70s, DAF 44. Perfect for anyone with their sort of economy motoring on their mind. Another Saab, just to complete the set, we've had the 96 V4, that's a little saloon, the two-door saloon, and now we've got a 95 Estate, again with the Ford of Germany V4 engine under its bonnet. The earlier cars had the two-stroke Saab engine, but these had the V4. And we've had the Rover P5B Coupe, and just to complete the set, we have the Rover P5B Saloon here. Different grille compared to the earlier 3.0-litre P5, and the fog lamps below the headlights show that this is one of the V8 cars. Now here's a real rarity. The uh, Wolseley 1822, this six-cylinder car was um, a posh one, if you like, of the wedge range in the 1970s. These were only built from March 75 to September 1975, the last of the Wolseleys. Also rare now, these early 1970s Mercedes. This is a 250 automatic, one of the W114 series. Alongside it, they can see a Mark II Triumph, uh, very much a rival to the Mercedes back in the day, but probably a fair bit cheaper. Now, if you wanted a practical family car with a sporting edge to it, perhaps one of these Reliance Scimitar GTEs would have been on your shopping list. Three litre V6 Ford Power, fiberglass body, steel chassis. This one from 1974, seen at Malvern. Next up, quite a rare car now. It's not a Manta. This is a Vauxhall Cavalier Sports Hatch, 1.6 litre car, registered May 79. Looks like it was in the middle of some work there, but did it ever get completed? Has it been finished? Has it been restored? This certainly has, an early 1970s, a mighty Toyota Crown, a neighbour of ours had a new one of these, very similar to this. This is a fourth generation car, uh, built from 1971 to 1974. All the mod cons, all the toys, quite a plush car. And we round out this collection of family cars in the 1970s with a look at what may have been a common family car in America in the 70s. A Ford County Squire LTD of 1979. What a mighty machine that is. And that rounds out this collection of family cars from the 1970s. Please have a look around the rest of the channel while you're here before you disappear and uh, keep an eye on the channel for future uploads because there are plenty more in the pipeline and I'll see you again very very soon. Bye for now.